Welcome to another beautiful day of my life. Just finished two client appointments. Now I am making time to work out because I keep putting that on the back burner. I keep putting my physical health last and I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna do a P-Volve workout and then I'm gonna get right back to work. I have another client appointment later, a last minute one for media training, which, is, which has been really fun. And then I'm gonna work on some of my other goals. Finish updating my course work workbook. And I really wanna sew something. I showered, my hair is half dry, and now I'm making some lunch, which I don't really enjoy doing because I just think this is time I could be working, but I need to eat. I'm gonna show you what I'm making. I just took the heat off of this. This is a pork kimchi soup. I got it from the, from the refrigerated section, so basically instead of a can, it's just in a bag. You refrigerate it, heat it up, then we're almost done. But I'm just making some brown rice that you heat up real quick to go with it. Ooh, it's hot. Steamy. Looks pretty good. I laid down a bed of rice, and then I am not just eating this as the soup. I poured it over the rice because, for me, dishes that have a little bit of rice are a little heartier. And sometimes kimchi could be spicy. I don't know if this is. First time with this one, so I'm just going <laughs> to use the rice to mellow it out if it is really hot. I've seen a few ultra cropped blazer sets recently and I've been wanting one. And I happen to have this suit that I thrifted. This is an older design by Ed Evenings by Nancy Bracoloni. Bracoloni? I'm not exactly familiar with the brand, but I'm gonna show you guys the before and the after. This was a really easy upcycle. I'll tell you what I did. I took in the sides of the skirt, I shortened the hem of the skirt, and then I cropped the blazer. After that, I had to re-sew the button snaps to adjust their placement so it fit a little bit tighter. And then I added a new button on the front of the blazer jacket because the old buttons were falling apart and I wasn't a fan. Here is the finished look. This upcycle only took a few hours. I was able to get it taken care of while I was watching a few episodes of Below Deck. Follow me on Instagram at Dining Walker if you wanna see how I style this one. Here's a really quick, easy fashion hack. If you have a favorite old sweater and it started to pill, you can just take a regular razor, you can shave the fabric and then use a lint roller over it and your sweater is gonna be like new. This is one of the easiest things you can do to extend the life of your garment and prevent it from going into a landfill. Wow, it feels great to get outside. Woohoo! We're headed to the grocery store. We're gonna go get some ingredients to make my first loaf of bread on my own. I've made some before with my grandmother. That was when I had adult supervision. So we're gonna try out some jalapeno cheese bread. And if it doesn't work out, that's okay. We'll try again. You're supposed to put the ingredients in, according to this recipe, wet ingredients first. Warm water. We're gonna, I don't know. Do I have a normal cooking thermometer to check that the temperature is between 90 and 95 degrees? No, I do not. Do we have a baby thermometer? Yes, we do. Update, that doesn't work. It feels warm. Somewhere around here. We're gonna pop this in. One large egg. Good job, team. Flour spread out. This is bread flour. I don't know about this. Just leveling that out just a little bit. Yeast in one corner. This is active dry yeast. Yeast in one corner. Okay, well, we're trying it. Two teaspoons of sugar. Sugar should be in a different corner. One and a half teaspoons of salt. If I did any of these steps wrong, we have no other, we have no plan B. This is how it's looking. We have to do the settings now. And I'm supposed to select white loaf, light crust, one and a half pounds. So basic. I think that's basic. Okay, mine says basic, French, sweet, express. Whole wheat, dough, pasta, bake. Okay, so we're gonna do basic. We're gonna do light crust, which on my machine is L. I guess this is a set timer. I don't know. Learning. It sets the timer for you. Okay. Then it's supposed to beep. Then I'm supposed to add in cheese, jalapenos, and save a little bit of cheese for the top. And I think that's it. Look at how beautiful it looks. Look at my little dough. It's still breakfast for me, so while I wait for the bread to take its next step, I 
heat it up one of these little buns. You can get them in the freezer section and some eggs and then have some pickled carrots and some sauce to dip the bun in. I heard a beep. I can see a little bit in there. By the way, if you missed the other episode, this is a thrifted bread maker. So this is not just a test of my bread making skills. This is a test of the bread maker. If it didn't turn out, I'm going to probably blame the bread maker. So. I'm excited. I don't really know what to do right now with my hands. They suggested letting the bread cool on a rack. <laughs> Baking sheet. The recipe said that I need to add in the shredded cheese, which we didn't have a cheese grater, couldn't find it, so I just chopped some up. Then we add the jalapeno in there too, okay? When it's done kneading, throw it in, mix it in, I guess. Ready to go, let it continue, let it bake. Also remove this guy, the kneading paddle. They said that your machine should beep. I don't know if mine beeped, I don't know if it didn't beep or not, but I at some point was like, I don't hear it making noise, so I'm gonna just go for it. I also added a little bit of flour because somebody said that the dough should not be super sticky, like it shouldn't really stick to the walls of the pan. And this one was sticking, like when I touched it, it was really sticking to my hand. So I added a little bit of flour, mixed it all in, threw in the cheese, the jalapenos, and then I just shut it. And then about 10 minutes ago, I started smelling bread. Rewind. Then they said take some extra shredded cheese and a little bit of jalapeno and then sprinkle it on top, okay, for a little extra crispiness. I did not save enough cheese and jalapeno. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. It looks like bread. Wow, doesn't that look good? Here it is, here it is, it's hot. All right, now what? Oh, it just pops out. How beautiful is that? That's just too beautiful. Now I gotta let it cool. I'm so pleased. Mm. I did make like a sandwich for this. Mm. Oh, the possibilities, so many breads. It reminds me of a bread slicer. Somebody got a bath and she's upset about it. I'm sorry, I'm not the one who gave you the bath. You shouldn't be upset at me. You shouldn't be mad. Let's put a blankie on them. There you go. It's 11.40. I thought I would have been done with this earlier. I was recapping for this world for the top model. I kept remembering I had other things to do, things that are really timely. Even though this is still timely, I wanna get this video out ASAP. I'm gonna film it tomorrow. But there were other things and emails that I had with clients that I had to immediately respond to. So a couple of things got in the way, but not bad things, still work things, not distractions. Back at SoCal. Oh, I got the breakfast panini. Pretty good. I got some avocados. What's this? The chicken honey? Yeah, looks great. And then I picked up a juice at Impact Juice too. I forgot to share my outfit details earlier today. This is a vintage thrifted leather jacket from Uniform Petite Leather, John Paul Richard. It says it's a size 12. It's a little oversized, but you know what? We're working with it. I am wearing this other thrifted merino wool, kind of long. It's like a very thin, like a lightweight sweater from Banana Republic. These pants I've had for so long. These are from Free People. I will say if you get some like this though, size up. I got, I ordered a size up and honestly when I got them, they were still pretty small. And then these shoes, these heels, ooh, my pants are coming unzipped. These heels are from Barba Bowie, but I got them on the real real, and I love them. Yay, shop resale. It would be so cool trying to join us for dinner today. I'm so cool. <laughs> Happy birthday. Oh gosh, no, we don't talk about it. Okay. Oh, I feel I feel like weird about it. I don't know. It's a great year. Oh by the way, Brooke's here. <laughs> Hello. We're at Taco's Way, Stephanie's place, and we're doing dealer's choice for spicy marks. It's gonna be infused with something. I'm so excited. I, I love am. a good marg. I love a spicy margarita. Mm -hmm. What is about to happen? Whoa! Okay, I Stop! <laughs> <laughs> that was Spicy uh, passion fruit margarita. Love spice. And then um, fresh, uh, fresh squeezed uh, blood orange. It's <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite songs ever. Yeah.
but a night. Let me share with you the not so fun side of being an entrepreneur. These are the things that I think stop a lot of people from being an entrepreneur. And I feel like right now is a perfect example. In 2021, my business grew. And when it grows, if you want it to continue to grow, you're usually going to have to start implementing new systems and new systems and plans for growth. So one of the ways that I decided to do this was to re-release a course I had created uh, last year, but I wanted to update it and then send it out. Well, in order to kind of get the word out, um, a couple things has to be done. Of course, I have to email, I have to let people know and post on social media, of course. But aside from that, there are things that need to be set in place. So when people go to my website, they have to be able to click and see the course information so they can decide, is the course right for me? So on my to-do list, I am building a new page for my website that is dedicated to the Content Queen course. And this even was learned through trial and error. I switched from Wix to WordPress because WordPress has so many more capabilities. That's a piece of advice for anybody out there that's wanting to get started or have their own business. I know how to navigate WordPress pretty well. And I already know really what I wanna put on this new page, but it's just time consuming to actually do it to create the custom colors for, for it. And then I'm gonna need branding graphics. So I can't just say, hey, you know, here's the course, sign up for it. I'm gonna have to have some graphics that I create through Canva that are gonna be examples of what's gonna be in the course. And then I have to outline the course as well and kind of explain what's in it. And the other thing that I need need for that page though, even though I haven't started the page, so I can start this first, is more testimonials for it. So that's something that's important when you purchase things, right? We look at testimonials, we look at reviews. And so I know that that new page is going to need testimonials for the uh, Content Queen course. So how do we do that? So what I have to do is go into my user area on WordPress and I can view and filter and figure out, okay, which contestants or title holders are, are currently enrolled in the course. And there's no easy way though that I've found to take those users and download them into a spreadsheet that I convert into a CVS file. I have to go through them after they're filtered. Then I am going to have to copy paste each email individually and then I put that into a spreadsheet. I convert the spreadsheet into a CVS file. Then I upload the CVS file to my email provider which is ConvertKit and then from there I can send one email out to everyone all at once letting them know that the courses have been updated and that I'm looking for new testimonials. So it's like, yeah, could this thing be done by other people? Of course it could. Do I have staff members right now? No. Getting this file put together tonight and sending out the testimonial request email and the update is something I can get done tonight. It would take me longer to go on some, some kind of outsourcing website like Fiverr and find the right person, message them, get in contact with them, ask them to accept the job. I mean, that could take a week and maybe a week at, at soonest at the earliest so sometimes it's just worth it to do it yourself so then i'll know that like in the meantime while i start building the website page then i'll just be waiting on a few testimonials that that'll be the last part that i need on that page so these are the little things that entrepreneurs do on a daily basis that nobody can see like nobody's posting this stuff on instagram this isn't cool to do this isn't fun but these are the things that are necessary that you, you especially do at the beginning of your journey and then later you hire people to do. So that's my goal. One day, grow the channel so much I can start hiring on staff, assistants, and people to help with this so I could be capable of doing even more.